All right, I'm going to call this meeting of the Little Calumet River Basin Development Commission to order for Wednesday, September 20th, 2023. Please set your phones on stun and I'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and individual, with liberty, justice for all. Mr. Lambert, nice to see you. Can you please call roll? Here. Present. Present. Here. Dave Barcelonas? Here. Ron Ware? Here. Robert Oshie? Here. LaVon Whitaker? Absent, William Baker. Present. All right, we have a quorum. Next up is the approval of minutes from August 16th, 2023. Any deletion, corrections, motions, let's say. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from August 16th of 2023. There's motion, there's second. 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 Any discussion? Mr. Wicklin, I guess we're still doing roll call. Yeah. Mrs. Lambert, I like roll call. <laughs> yeah. Sound yes. Andrew Rodney? Yes. Andrew Rodney? Yes. Derek Hayes? Yes. Dave Castellano? Here. Ron Ware? Yes. Robert Ochi? Yes. William Baker? Yes. All right, it's out there forever to read. Uh, Riveting stuff. Next up is Chairman's Report. Um, September is the 15th anniversary of uh, what happened in 2008. The yellowing pictures, and as you walked in, you saw a video that is posted on the website of the true reason why we sit up here and do what we do. Um, we continue to evolve and work on a $275 million man-made project that if you don't do maintenance, those are the kinds of things that you have to deal with as a community. Uh, we are dealing with mother nature. So if we do get 10 gallons for our five gallon bucket, we're gonna have an issue. But we were, we were far better prepared uh, today than we were prior to the event in September of 2008. We continue to focus on the watershed as a whole and try to make sure that the system is a system and it works in conjunction with how it was designed with the improvements that need to be made as time goes on and life happens. Um, everybody needs to think about that. Uh, finance report, approval of the claim for September 2023. We need a, a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of claims for September 2023 in the amount of $783,187.19. There's a motion there. Second. Second. Uh, discussion. Mr. Ripe, this is the big one, please. So, uh, so uh, we'll go to the ones that the bottom ones were three reimbursements. We re we're reimbursing Hannah Sanitary, the town of Highland, the town of Griffith. Those are all reimbursements that we have agreed to over the years. As long as they pass the inspections, uh, they will be reimbursed for their amounts for the pump stations. For Hammond, it's 182. For Highland, it's 42,000. For Town of Griffith, since uh, they were a federal flood control project on the Katie Marsh, but never had any source of revenue for uh, maintenance of it, we've sort of entered an agreement to adopt them and, and allow for the 50,000 to make sure it's cut, maintained. And, and do all the things that they need to do. So uh, that's important. Our insurance was a 76,429 for a liability, for any trip and falls, wheelchair excavating, work being done, uh, clearing uh, trees on hard stitch. I have some pictures to show you uh, for that. That's 89,000 uh, and some change in cap with their maintenance for the Chase Street and Black uh, Oak mitigation sites, that's 14,400. And then Lake County Parks is a reimbursement for their application, the work that they're doing out at the former environmental center out in uh, Lake Station uh, off of Liverpool. Other than that, um, Duferon Corporation, that's the retainage for the piece of equipment that we purchased. I have a picture of that going in, all the pieces and parts have uh, finally arrived and are on site. So uh, we are releasing that and, and the breaker is now being placed by uh, Passion. Uh, and and their things are going well. There's a couple small minor technical issues that they're working on. So uh, that's all I really have as far as the big ones. If you have anything in particular, I'd be happy to answer. All right, under discussion, any questions for Mr. Repay as it relates to the uh, bills? 
Be there now. We have a motion and second, Mrs. Lambert. Yes. 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 <clears throat> well, uh, Sour Woods keeps on uh, plugging along. They're actually moving the sand piles now, and they're moving now into the infrastructure side of, of the uh, world. So that should be wrapping up here shortly. They've had some rainstorms that have prevented them from moving as fast as they would like, but um, they're now moving. I was out there last week uh, to take some pictures to, and see what they were what what they were doing. And the sand is now moving, which is a good thing. The sand piles were. Uh, quite high. Uh, Katie Marsh uh, Raker, as I showed you, is is being installed by Passion. We're doing the hard ditch clearing. I have some pictures for that. We purchased the new battery operated drills uh, for the communities. The, the, the test ones went well. So one drill is now in Highland. One is in Munster. Two are in Hammond. Two are with our contractor in Gary. One is in Griffith. And one is in uh, the hands of Indot, or will soon be on Friday. So what that does is all the previous drills needed to be generator powered. These drills are lighter, uh, easier to handle, and in the event of emergency, it allows us more power to uh, close uh, close the gates at a faster rate since we now have uh, double the, the number of drills on hand that are available to us. Uh, Burke is still modeling both Turkey Creek, uh, Big uh, Beaver Dam Ditch and Deep River along with uh, Burns Ditch. So we have some back and forth conversations, some issues, uh, some scenarios we put towards them, adding a pipe over at 65, uh, opening the uh, railroad uh, closure at Harrison and on Turkey Creek. So that's uh, still progressing. First Street has now got its pump one back in, uh, likely pump two will, will be replaced sometime in the uh, in the winter time, when hopefully things have settled out a bunch, uh, we are still having discussion with our friends at the core over crediting. Uh, this week we finished the fifth mow of the year, which is the most that we've ever done or I've ever done. But just the way that the the uh, atmosphere has been, it's just been growing like crazy. And now that the core wants to do inspections in March in in Gary, we may have to mow it one more time just so it doesn't grow uh, too fast before our inspection. Because if they're doing it in March, I'll guarantee you we won't be able to get a, a mower out there uh, to do anything. We also sprayed for the riprap and um, oh, a, a truck. I forgot to put a picture of this. The truck that drove off the levee that I think you guys were all drove off the levee. Drove off the levee. It, it, it got diverted a little bit. It was on Chase Street. <laughs> Um, he said, the driver said that his map told him to go to the truck stop and that was the fastest route. And so he, wow. he drove on the levee and then he, as he was approaching Grant, thought he should turn back around, which uh, is this a pickup truck or a, uh, oh, now you're going to make me go to the, it was a semi truck, truck. Semi eight wheeler 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 here, don't know. carrying 40,000 pounds of material. And, uh, I got a phone call on Friday at about 6 30. We have contacts, and so when I get a call from DNR conservation officer at 6 30 on Friday, it's generally not a good thing. And so they informed me and they asked me to go out there. And I spent a, a little while out there talking to all the police and and the recovery folks, and they were out there till two in the morning. I was not out there till two in the morning. Um, and uh, we notified the core, and there is some damage. It's I'm sure it's going to be we're going to have to contact their insurance for some repair because the recovery vehicles and the recovery tow trucks, if you're familiar with them, those semi ones aren't small either. And our levy isn't really necessarily probably designed for that. You generally just small vehicles that change the billboards, for instance, uh, or, or vehicles, just regular cars, not necessarily semi. So um, we're gonna have to take a bigger uh, look at that. As you mentioned, it's the 15 year uh, anniversary. And we were very fortunate this past Sunday that we missed the great rain of all Burnham and Dalton. Don't think it would have caused any necessary flooding, flooding, but it was certainly would have put some, some pressure on the system. Um, some reports were nine to 10 inches in Burnham and Dalton. Uh, I know Cal City got eight, Hammond got five and a half uh, in an hour and a half. 
system, the, the system isn't designed. I mean, the, the sewers aren't designed for that. It was mainly that was the problem. Um, if nothing over top, the little Calvin over top in the Cal City just was simply so they're mostly combined sewers anyway. Mm -hmm. It's a problem. Yep. So that's um that's pretty much uh, I have a question back to the truck. Mm -hmm. Um it, so the damage, quote unquote, has that been assessed and who did the core does that? Do we need to file with the insurance company? Uh, who's out there taking pictures? We took uh, pictures. The court took pictures. Superficial damage that we can see is, of course, major running and exposure on the levee, some cracking in the pavement, certainly, uh, as he was driving down that. It, it, I mean, if you're only talking it's two and a half inches. I, I understand, but it, whatever it is from where he got on to where it had to get pulled off, whatnot, yeah. just to have the insurance people know that it's out there because I think that trucking company might have some involvement with that. We're supposed to get the police report from the city of Gary because that's who took jurisdiction over it. They drove through an A-frame. They knocked over a jersey barrier. They knocked over a sign that says, no, don't go up here. So there's all kinds of stuff. So we're going to wait to see the report, and then I'm sure Mr. Whitfield will reach out to their folks. Thank you. Another question, uh, Mr. Chairman, for Mr. Yes, Rebe. Uh, does the core have to be out immediately on in situations like that? I, mean, I don't know if they charge us for that, but couldn't we just send them a report they, out of curiosity? Um, yeah, the levy safety comes from a different pot of money than, than the... The construction side so it doesn't really cost us any money for them to be out they just want to be aware of it at night we weren't sure exactly what it was going to look like but it was important for them to look at it just on a superficial level just to see what what, what we're up against they agree with what my assessment was just now is running some issues with the side slope that are going to need to be addressed Certainly, the asphalt up on top is is going to be need to be repaired to some degree, um, but they're not sure. And, and they said if you do the levy survey, it should de determine that you're going to be good. It's just, I mean, you know, thankfully he just wasn't parked up there. He, I guess he slid off, which is a good thing or a bad thing. But um, no idea what he was doing up there. I, I mean, besides what he said is. Directions say, I'm sure his directions don't say go through an A-frame gate, but it it was, it did. It wasn't, it hasn't been the first time someone has gone awry because their map is like Mr. Broadbanks, good? Okay. Anybody else for Mr. Repay? I got another yeah, one. I have, I have okay, go ahead, guys. Sorry, I was on mute. Yes, I was just saying thank you. Um, some of the encumbered dollars on the project tracker for work that was or agreed to, you know, back in 21, early 22. Is there any update on that, or is am I missing something here? Which which project? Did... So, like on 317 of 21, we entered an agreement with Town of Winfield for the Hidden Creek stormwater, allocated 300 grand. Right. Nothing's been spent. They, uh, Winfield tends to, to spend it all at the end. They, they don't go. End of what? Time? No, no. This is, <laughs> yes. they, they, they put, and some communities go piece, like, for instance, you'll see on the claim list where Hammond went for the reimbursement of their dollars. Winfield waits for the project to complete and close out. Now, that project has been just recently completed. That gives a culvert replacement, if I remember. So they're going to wait till they file bill, close it out, and then they'll send us a full reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So that work's done. And then uh, with regards to the work that was awarded or kind of agreements that were entered into in February of 22 with the town of Maryville, you have for the Hayes Farm, you have Hickory Ridge and Kaiser Ditch. Three hundred forty-five thousand and eighty-one thousand. Nothing completed. And Joey will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Maryville does the same thing. They they send at one time when they close out the project. They they don't ask for draws on it. Hammond Hammond does draws. That answers my question. Thank you. Anybody else for Mr. Repay? 
I'm not letting them off the hook. Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you some pictures. You guys, done? You got more stuff? I got more pictures. Okay, wait. Before we go to the pictures, can I ask you about the mows? When yes. was the in the past? When was the last time we did the mow? Because you're going to have to mow again. Like the last month? Yeah. We we have done that in November, beginning of November. Okay. Where it has been okay, where it doesn't cause anything disrupt disrupting as far as rutting and stuff like that. So, you know, that's the latest we've ever done it. it but it's usually so we're talking. Was it the 20th now? Right. You're probably looking end of October would probably be the safest because once you get into Halloween, you one or two more. One. You Only one. more. Have we ever done six before? No. no. They just yeah, did one. So. We just did it this it finished this week. It started last week. They had some the rain. I saw them in Highland. Yeah. So we have done five, I believe, once or twice time that I've been here. Usually it's four, but it just seems like it would rain, it was humid, it grew like crazy, and then, you know, we would try it, we had like to cut it down. Right, it's going to get warm, and then I was going to get, we got rain, so we know it's going to grow again, we'll do it one more time. We cut, uh, let it think it one more after that, that, having to do with the inspections getting moved to March. Yeah, we just were informed today that the inspections were being moved to March. Okay. So, that tells me that we have to go at least into late October and try to guess the best we can and certainly at least get through Gary because that's where the they're breaking it up into March is going to be the East Reach, which is everything east of Klein. And then they're going to go into June, which is not a problem for us when they go into Highland and Munster and Hammond. Mm -hmm. so our big issue is getting the most so that they don't cite us for whatever one foot or two feet is there a benefit to us to have them in in this particular instance start um you know on the west side instead of starting in the middle of nowhere and gary and who's that in march the core yeah <laughs> they determine where they want to go based on okay. staffing level they determine a lot of stuff and i've seen it doesn't necessarily work out very well so this is a little common sense they determine that out because they they pull staffing from different districts based on the amount of resources they need so they'll pull from detroit they'll pull from from cincinnati they'll pull from louisville they pulled from buffalo Got it. so i mean just keep that in mind because i'll forget next month that you know you maybe mentioned someone there you think it's going to be probably not going to be able to get a mower out there um also we've talked a couple of times about asphalt along the past is that going to happen at all this season you think 50 50. Um, right because that closes yeah and then the um the the collaboration um did their activity go to the end of the season is it when when is their activity like scheduled or is it i think the email that i had sent out i don't recall exactly what they have scheduled i know passion is framing up some of their work off of georgia street so as long as the framing goes well they it's it's basically a post and panel that they have for a, a weir once that's done their project is done now They've just recently done a Marshmaster, whatever, like a, a, a job up at the um, rookery. They just finished that yesterday where they were mowing it all down yeah. and knocking everything down. Are they taking pictures like we've asked? Yep. Okay. I gave you some pictures just right. of, the, of the framing, but they've got pictures of, of the whole thing. So when's that going to be done? I mean, isn't it, is, this the staging thing? is this the staging thing where the structure, the new structure? Yes, the okay. structure hasn't been placed there yet. It's not. It's further along on, on Georgia, okay. not as far along on, uh, what the it, on ninth. Okay. So please do me a favor and make sure they take the before and after those structures going in and close those locations. And that's all I had. If you guys are done, then Dan's actually. Mr. Oh, Mr. Chairman. waving his hand. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, one more regarding the uh, inspe inspection time period of March, typically either wet or frozen. Is that going to be a problem? I mean, yes. did they say why they're changing it from May to March? My understanding is uh, one of the lead inspectors has to take family leave uh, in April, which is when they typically will do it. So from a staffing standpoint, the lead inspector needs to move it up. Okay, thank you. They're convenient. It's going to be cold. I guarantee you that. Not with climate change. Okay. All right, anybody else?
All right, Mr. Ripe. So here, here are the pictures. I, I guess I should, I guess I could do it a whole lot better. Okay, I can't see very well. Um, Are cheaters? No, I would. So this, this, this is this is you're in hard stitch. You're roughly between uh, the Weir or w Wicker Park, Hawthorne Ridge Roadish area, and where Katie Marsh and Schoon Ditch all come in. So these are all that general vicinity. Which is like the Nipsco easement. Just uh, north of it. Okay. Yeah, because there's a huge pipeline for Nipsco, so we can't go in any further to the south. So you got to jump out and jump back in. They're, they came in off of uh, Spoon Ditch by uh, the pump station. That's quite a structure right there. So okay. These are just some of the things. You, Is that a core design? Yeah, it looks pretty cool, actually. I hope it's someone that's, <laughs> that's here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see their discharge here, the discharge for the, you know, for their sump pump or whatever. So it, it's you see that pipe, the little cord here. Uh, what we run into a lot is a lot of these aren't as extended as far, and they leave them against the bank. In this case, as a decent structure that this is, they at least spent it and, and sent it out a little further. Our problem tends to be people that let it roll right next to it. Um, here's a one uh, that is just on the island side. Um, over the ridge road on heart stitch i can't remember the name of the road but as you can see you got a little ladder here there's a lot of erosion that is occurring once again there's some discharge pipe that has been laid they have a nice backyard but underneath it what many people don't see from the riverside is all this erosion that's going on and we'll get into some of the reasons why there's a look uh south of a place that where it has been finished already. I don't have the before picture, I couldn't find it, but that's the, the after. So it just opens this whole area up from, you know, from trees and stuff that have fallen or are falling into the area. We're not into just deforesting this place, but we are into not making sure that this thing collapses and starts ripping out the, the root balls of the side of the levee. Now this is looking north in the distance, you will see Ridge Road, that's Ridge Road there. And you have all sorts of uh, cutting back that happened here. And I'll give you some more in depth. Now, here are, here's a, a problem that we have. Every one of these holes is a little burrow where an animal has gone in. Now what happens is when the, when the rain, when the river rises, it goes into those burrows, the burrows all collapse, and then things just come off in, in mass quantities. And he just moves the burrow up a little more. Well, do we have one. You should see there was one. I, I don't know if I put it in the, a thing. Here's another one where it's, this is a large tree, and then you see all the burrowing underneath. So what will happen is if the water gets up there, it will collapse this, and then this tree comes, comes down this way. This is uh, a large culvert that is supposed to drain uh, Hill and Vale. Uh, as you see, I thought that's there. Yeah, so this is Ridge Road right up here. If you if you look at it, this is actually it. Um, this is actually collapsed. There's actually material here. We don't know what necessarily happened, but we can tell you that this culvert is not working the way it should. Um, but just one of the whose responsibility is maintenance of that culvert, Tom? Technically, yes. They we notified them when we saw it, but that's terrible. It's not great. It's crushed, and then yeah, that's brand new. And then here's the the raker uh, that we have. If, for those of you that hadn't seen the first one that was devised, this one is more. This is healthier. It's a conveyor. This is a healthier trash rack uh, than what than what is uh, was out there. And that was and that's it. So I just wanted to show you what from the inside, you know. We we got some positive phone calls. We got some negative phone calls. People think that we're we're being too aggressive. I will tell you this: there, Lee has been out there. He has been doing this for ten years now. We don't cut down trees if they're just straight up. If they're leaning and they're going to fall, we'd rather deal with them now as opposed to dealing with them when it's a bad situation. And ultimately, this is all going to get hopefully uh, stabilized. And not stabilized like the the decking material because the decking material will eventually erode away. 
We've also seen scenarios where they had put gabion baskets up that they had collapsed. And the reason why they collapse is going back to the discharges for people sump pump. They're discharging behind the, the gabion baskets. It's eroding away, and then the gabion baskets basically collapse on themselves. <laughs> but when we go through, we extend out all of the, the uh, discharges that we know of that we can find and make sure that they're going against a, an area that's manageable and won't cause the erosion. Don't these people see their backyard falling, you know, down every eroding is what the word I think is? I guess they see the backyard that is their backyard and some are losing their backyard, but some have beautiful backyards and they're wonderful and they're nice. But I think if you look from this angle, if you were ever to be in the river and look out like those pictures, I think it would give, I think most people an idea of how much erosion is actually happening. Like they just don't see it. I don't think they do. So mm -hmm. is it even legal for them to discharge into the river? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I don't know, but I, don't know what they're just I think it's, I think it really comes down to how they're doing that. We, we've had folks that had multiple hoses, multiple discharges. Um, some people still throw yard waste in there, which doesn't make any sense to me. Some people, uh, they have in-ground pools and their, their, their valve is to discharge out to the river. I mean, from a, I mean, it's not chlorine going to hurt anything because of so much water, but it's just the constant erosion down the side of the bank. It's just, and, and there's other pictures that I didn't put. I mean, there's head walls that have collapsed that are used for the drainage for their, their house. It's, you know, the, the sewers in the front of the catch basins in the front and it's designed to drain into the river directly. So if we're gonna go through and spend all this money making all these repairs, how do you educate everyone on um, the illegal, or not illegal, but the improper way that they're utilizing the system and how do we, uh, you know, how do we protect future damage? So all the ones we've done in the past, we have, we have fixed all the head walls and, and secured them. So we'll, if we were ever to get down to this point, we would probably fix that one that I saw the show is broken and we'll, we'll mat it up and make sure it's protected. But, the, you know, the people throwing the yard clippings, I can't stop that. But I can, what we do is we try to, get together with each resident sort of say, okay, where's your discharge? Yes, some of them know, some of them don't know, but we can tell on some of them. On one, I can tell you on the Highland side, I had to, I did the, whatever, the GPS or I geolocated myself. We still don't know what it is, but it looks like it's just running like a waterfall that's just constantly running down the side of the, the embankment. We don't think there's a catch basin. We don't know what it is. There is a pool, um, in one of the backyards, but we we don't think that they're draining it because we had said that he had seen it for a couple of days. So maybe there's a leak in the pool that they don't even know about. Okay, we can't find the source. Any other questions for Mr. Repe? Moving right along. Okay. Oh, one last question. Uh, okay. So these areas that we've already been through and we've already repaired and put the head walls in, are we recording that in some type of as-built drawing so that we're down the road we can go back and investigate this, you know, still intact. We have pictures and as built for everything up to 45th. We are waiting for one final sign off to do from the next uh, phase, which is for 45th to Franlin. That will happen sometime this winter. Uh, they, they have 90 days to sign off on something. The 90th day was September, Ninth or eighth or something like that. So they they will be signing off shortly. Okay, thank you. All right. Next up, an update from the United States Army Corps of Engineers. There's somebody to speak on behalf. Is that you, Mr. Repe? I guess I'll be their spokesperson today. They they sent us a, a report um, dated from January sixth. Uh, no, no check though. No, no check from 2023, and uh, you know, I, I look, but uh, we, according to them and their estimations, uh, we preserved, uh, we prevented 107 million dollars worth of damage because our structure was intact. Cool. There's a calculation for that. That's what they have. I'll make sure you guys get this. 
Oh, don't you have a book about that? Put your board. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I offered them the opportunity to speak or send a report, and so that's what they sent me. That's it. That's it. Okay, moving right along. Other issues, new business. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution okay. 2023-12 and an interlocal agreement with the town of Maryville for Hickory Ridge flood control improvements watershed project in the amount of nine hundred and thirty-two thousand one hundred and sixty-eight dollars or 50% of the total project cost, whichever is less. This is subject to a final draft and approval by attorney, executive director, and chairman. There's a motion. Is there a second? Yeah, second. Bunch of seconds. Who's to repay? This is just the resolution that has, it, it uh, covers what you guys have already agreed to at the last meeting, which was approved uh, the same language. Okay. Outstanding. Any questions with regards to this? This is in Maryville been ongoing for quite a long time, just north of 61st Street and uh, Cap. Uh, we have a motion and a second, okay. Mrs. Lambert. Tom McKinsey? Yes. Tom Bessette? Yes. Anthony Broadhead? Yes. Derek Lennon? Yes. Dave Capilano? Yes. Ron Ware? Yes. Robert Ochi? Yes. William Baker? Yes. Moving right along. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve an agreement with Superior Engineering in the amount of $248,000 for engineering services and equipment upgrades at the Burn North, Grant East, and Grant West pump stations, subject to final draft and approval by attorney, executive director, and chairman. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. And a second, Mr. Repay. In my previous uh, updates, we have talked about some issues that we've had with specifically Grant West. Uh, and the alarms and the babysitting of the PLC. Um, it was recommended that we hire a superior who has experience with this uh, type of subject matter and is very good and has been good for us in the past. And so what they're gonna do, and, and they've already done an assessment, we've met with them, I've met with them two or three times on site for each one of these locations. And they've already done a general assessment basically stating that the PLC at Grant West uh, is beyond its useful life. Um, I believe that the same holds true for her. Um, and that what they're going to do is offer us and get the drawings together uh, and the plans together so that we can upgrade those PLCs so that they're more reliable and efficient. We're, just to, so that everyone knows, when we took over Grant West, we never received anything from the Gary Sanitary District as far as a manual. Um, uh, Did we replace those pumps once? We 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 yeah. thought wasn't that the place that there were were no pumps? Or there, was that a there, different no, one? no, that was Burst South. Okay, so we immediately started with this on Burst South, where we knew that there were only one. There was only one pump and a sub pump, where there should have been four pumps and a sub pump. So yeah. we replaced that completely when we first took over. Grant West was running. We pulled them out to do general maintenance on them, but when we asked for maintenance logs and reports from GSD, they were not available. Um, and so now we are at the point where the PLC is starting to cause us difficulties. And so we're now going to look to replace those and start anew. Um, Grant West by far, well, between Grant West and Burr uh, North, probably the two uh, most used stations, Grant East, somewhat one of the more active ones, but definitely Grant West and Burr. And so hopefully supply chain issues aside, uh, we can get this upgraded uh, rather soon. Although their report is going to take 20 some weeks just to get us the plans and specs. So we'll still have to babysit it for a little while here, but you know, hopefully it won't be too much longer. So uh, prize assets that we're working on. Any questions for Mr. Repay? Yes, yeah. Mr. Chairman. This is only for engineering, no engineering oversee. This is only design. This is just for design. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Chief. Yeah, yeah. In this proposal, you're saying 24, 26 weeks mm -hmm. um, for the deliverables. And, and there's quite an amount of items listed on the deliverables. One, are the design documents going to be done? I took the 24 to 26 weeks as to being the design documents. I, I, this doesn't, I don't believe involve 
no. or ordering and, 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 and getting it. Uh, what I would, and what I've had discussions with Superior about is once they have a general sense of what we're going to need, I would like to go order that mm -hmm. so that we can, while they're finishing their details, we can get out in front of a more more than likely delay in some of this stuff coming in. Right, long lead energy pumps. Yep, okay. and probably electronics. Okay. Unless it changes in the next. So you think they're going to let us know prior how big, what we should order? They had a general idea. What they want to do is make it very similar to what um, we did at First South, which is Wonderlic uh, system uh, type of PLC that's upgraded, that's um, more efficient, that will have a better alarm system, that will also help us. And if you remember, we we upgraded the pump for the sump pump at uh, Burr North, and the sump pump kept on going on. It wouldn't take off, and so we brought that to their attention, and they're like, you know what? It may be not sized right as for what the core specs were. This may be a different one because ultimately our goal is not to, and we've talked about this before. We would I would rather run a sump pump into the ground for ten thousand dollars than have a pump one or pump two go on and off and those things are 60, 70 thousand dollars to replace. So um, that's the goal and that's what we want them to come back with. They've been in consultation with Flem and myself and we've all taken the tour and, and sort of given them what our thought process is as far as how we want this to run. In Burr North, we got a little detention fund. We can hold some for a little while. Um, Grant West, we don't. Grant West is strictly Large sewer running down all the way to oh yeah past thirty seven so and it takes in all of Grand Street so if that one goes we've got issues I got another hand raising huh yes Anthony oh, yeah on. Mr Chairman my apologies one more in the verbiage on this motion it says engineering services and equipment upgrades maybe for archival should it say engineering services for equipment upgrades they're not purchasing or upgrading anything they're just doing engineering right. Yeah, that's my understanding. They're, they're not purchasing anything. And I don't think you're going to be able to purchase three PLCs for 200. I think so. 48,000. It's going to be strictly engineering. They, they may be to help us or assist us, but they're not overseeing anything. They're, they're just simply designing it for us. And they could be somewhat. Did this group do the one we already have done, Superior? I'm looking for the consistency for all the pump stations so we don't have, uh, you know, a Galaxy and then an yeah. iPhone. No, no, and, it's all going to be you know, flip phone. And we, and we, talk, we talked about that because we don't want, for, for redundancy, for parts, for a lot of reasons, we want the same. Okay. So it's going to be flight pumps. We, we already have flight pumps in, okay. so it's going to be compatible with flight pumps um, and systems that, that regulate that. So. I would say it's near Wonder Lake. They've worked on the Burr North already with the backup generator. They're familiar with the Burr North one, but no one besides our electrical folks have dealt with Grant West or Grant East. Like, there's no PLC changes that have ever occurred on there. Let, let's talk about that because coordinating that to have all of those structures, those assets to be as interchangeable as possible, knowing that there's life that happens, but uh, I think that's a good goal. Uh -huh. So, Mr. Right. Wicklin, would I need to amend my motion in lieu of 248000 for engineering services and equipment upgrades, change it to 248000 for engineering services related to equipment upgrades? So yeah, take, out, take out the equipment upgrades. Take out and and replace it with related to. Well, related to uh, equipment upgrades. Equipment upgrades, right. Does he have to amend his motion, mm -hmm. Mr. Wicklin, or uh, based on that modification? He was a Roberts I think we can I think we can make the change in in the motion. Jody can everyone understands it up here. No one's gonna not second the motion. And then when the minutes come out, you'll approve the minutes and show that that's what. The motion was. Mrs. Lambert, who do you have as a second on that motion? I have um, Mr. Castellanos. Mr. do you understand what's going on? Yes, I do. Okay, I approve it. There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? 
Be there or not, Mrs. Lambert. Thomas, yes. Tom Bethany. Yes. Anthony Brodnick. Yes. Derek Lehman. Yes. Dave Capelon. Yes. Ron Ware. Yes. Robert Ochi. Yes. William Baker. Yes. All right. Definitely a big project there. All right. Next up is statements to the board from the floor. My favorite part. If you'd like to help us make sure that that stuff like that doesn't happen again, please come up to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Yes, ma'am. It's nice to see you. Nice to see all of you. The floor is almost on 142 floors. Hello, everybody. Hello, Anthony. Um, Hi, Lori. Uh, happy anniversary. Uh, I, I got involved in 2008 after the flood. I got involved in on, on the ground. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking up the next row. I got involved in the ground level helping people clean out their destroyed houses. So I saw the destruction firsthand. Um, I hope to never see it again. And I'm thankful for the things that you have done to help that process along. Um, that being said, I do still live by a river. Uh, I, while I am less concerned when it rains, I still do have concerns. I do use your website and I look at the gauges all the time when we get bad weather. Uh, they make me feel a little warm and fuzzy because I can see that we're not at 11 and a half feet. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, that being said, uh, while I'm grateful to not have to have federal flood insurance, I do carry secondary flood insurance and I would encourage anybody who lives in the vicinity of the river who used to be in the floodplain to do the same. It is drastically less expensive than federal flood insurance, but it is a peace of mind. And uh, while you have worked very hard to keep that river happening again, uh, never is a really long time. And we can never be sure. Mother Nature. So again, I am grateful for all the things you've done. Uh, the majority of the time, it has been a pleasure working with you. <laughs> There'll be some rocky talks, but for the most part, it has been a pleasure. And I want to thank you again for all your hard work. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Same to you. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. All right, bring it back to the board. Mr. Ware, anything to add? Uh, just thank those for uh, attending this evening, take the time out of your schedules. And uh, like been, that has been mentioned here, Couple times by Lori, by Bill, Chairman Baker, rather. Sorry. Uh, with the anniversary, the the importance of the work that is done here, and the effect on those back 15 years ago, um, and how it affected so many people throughout the region. Uh, like you say, Lori, never is a long time, uh, but I, I feel like everybody up here is trying to do their best to ensure that that doesn't ha happen again. So. Thoughts with everybody who was affected back in the day. Thank you, Mr. Wyshlinski. Um, well, I mean, we come up on the anniversary, and what's interesting, we had that, that deluge on Sunday, uh, and just uh, I looked at the, one, just one of the gauges at home, and, and within 12 hours, that gauge went from uh, 5.06 to 8.37 with three and almost three and a half feet in like 12 hours. But within 12 hours after that, it dropped almost the same amount. So that tells me we're clearing out things and things are working right. And uh, kudos to, to Dan and our partners along the river to keep things clear. So thank you, Mr. Gazdecki. I'd like to echo Mr. Ware's comments uh, with regards to everybody impacted by the flood. Uh, thank everybody for attending. Thank uh, Lori for her good advice to all our constituents out there that could be at risk. And also thank Mr. Lee for uh, bringing to our attention some of his concerns as it relates to the river, whether it's under our charge or not. Uh, we'll certainly do our best to uh, take care of everybody the best we can. Uh, we all try hard. Uh, sometimes the red tape of government takes a long, long, long time, and sometimes our hands are tied, even though they don't we don't want them to be. But uh, appreciate everybody's uh, appreciate everybody's patience and understanding. Thank you. 
Mr. Nimitz. I have nothing to add. Mr. Ochi. Nothing to add. Mr. Castellanos. Just want to let everybody know, thank you for coming. And also I support everything that each of the commissioners have stated here uh, for this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wicklin, anything for the greater good? Nothing to add. Mrs. Lambert. Nothing to add. Thank you for your help again. Um, all right, then uh, okay. I do. I have uh, I have something. The next meeting is Wednesday, October 18, 2023. Uh, check the uh, website. Most likely to be here at the town hall. Yeah, like uh, to Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Mr. Broad. He's at 2 o'clock in the morning. And he's out, of sight, out, of sight, out of sight, out of mind. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know you're trying to get out. Um, I would like to echo similar comments as everyone, um, particularly thanking the public uh we are most of us were actually here in munster on that those days or in the vicinity uh knee deep in water or chest deep in water uh and it was good for dan to remind us with the aerial videos and things of just what it was like um and particularly um i would also like to say that the effects are still ongoing um, they weren't just effects from that day. Like Lori said, you know, when it rains, she's less nervous, but nervous nonetheless. And even with us as a commission, uh, most of us are on a text chat. And every time it starts raining, I, the texts just start going crazy. Uh, we're looking at the gauges. So I think I would say we were effectively traumatized to some degree by this event. Uh, and 15 years on, the effects are still with us. So um, I I would um, particularly like to thank the chairman for keeping us focused on the things that matter all these years, every single month for 15, 10 or so years, referring back to the pictures and every single day focused on the things that will help us um, not go through that same thing again. It's a disciplined approach and, and we are part of the system as people. So just wanted to add that. Uh, okay, thank you. That was uh, that's very nice. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah. Okay, so that being said, next meeting is Wednesday, October 18, 2023. Look town hall, check the um, uh, website, and I'll entertain a uh, motion to adjourn. So um, moved. I got you know, a bunch of seconds. Mr. Wicklin. <laughs> Julie. I'm going to throw it under the bus. It's an all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the summer. Thank you.